right there, Scott Rayom, Nicole Gadois. This is this is her uh, her beast pop up pop in gallery here for the Swanton Arts Council. Uh, we're running it through August um, every Thursday and Friday night, five to nine. Uh, we're gonna have uh, different forms of art uh, for the opening week we got uh, some mixed media that's myself and Nicole uh, we're gonna also have uh, some painters photographers and some up upcyclers hope you can come out check it out it's uh, open to the public free bring your family and uh... pop up and pop in <laughs> Right now, I'm actually doing some live painting here, trying to finish up a painting that I've had going on for, uh, I'm ashamed to say, for over a year. So in my, in my spare time, if I ever find any, a um, little, little bit of this working on it. So I'm taking advantage of the time I'm here in uh, this gallery space, uh, four hours each night, try to get a little bit done. But um, so this one here is uh, Times Square. Um, if I was going to title it, I guess I would title it Times Square. So this is a uh, three-string guitar. Um, traditionally, that's what I make is cigar, cigar box guitars, but I uh, found an old uh, beat-up violin that was uh, actually on the side of the road, Maquam Shore, just out there for free. Picked it up, decided, hey, that's a good platform to make something unique and interesting. Um, so that's, it, it's a fun little, fun little thing that I, uh, it's, it's functional art. I can pick it up, play it, entertain a crowd. I've also made the case to, to house it. It's a fun little, fun little ditty. I think we're somewhat tuned in. So this is open G tuning, G, D, G. So right there, I'm playing a G chord without even touching anything, just strumming G chord. C chord, D chord, back to G. Wild thing, you make my heart sing. You make everything groovy. So you can see that's pretty easy to play. Fun little ditty. Violin, guitar. So here we have a, uh, a chair that I've done for uh, a chair affair 2017, which is going to be August 26th in Taylor Park, St. Albans. Um, I was asked if I would participate. I did two chairs last year. I only had time to do the one this year. This year they're doing something different. Normally they're Adirondack chairs. Everybody gets an Adirondack chair and they get to do whatever they please with it. This year it was the local businesses chose their own unique chairs and handed it over to an artist to do whatever they pleased with it. So did some koi fish on this one. It's, uh, it's a fun little bright chair. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it gets some good bids on it. I, I enjoyed doing it. It was uh, one of my stencil techniques, uh, something that I've been experimenting with lately. So here we have another one of my uh, guitars, creations under Missisquoi Delta Guitars. That's uh, kind of the business that I got going on when I build my guitars, aside from the painting that I do as myself, Scott Rayum. Um, so Missisquoi Delta Guitars, this was a, um, the body of a, uh, a harp. So this is an acoustic harp. I took the body of the harp because uh, somebody was going to throw it away. It was, it was beyond repair, couldn't be fixed. So I decided I think I can do something with that. So I made this unique instrument. It, you can plug it in. It is electric. Got a volume and tone control. Got a pickup selector switch on the side. Uh, it's again just totally playable. Feels comfortable. It's unique. Functional art. So here we have an example of my um, my uh, stencil art. I do all this with spray paint. Um, I have a hard time naming my pieces. If I could uh, name this one, I would say uh, it's just blowing in the wind. Um, it's just uh, a girl's face. Her hair, you can see, is kind of blowing in the wind a little bit, but it's um, pretty simple. 
I think this was maybe like a five layer stencil, not uh, not not too uh, too detail oriented, but um, it gets the point across. So here we have another example of my stencil uh, art. Um, it's all done with spray paint and stencils. This is the finished product here. This is number one of seven uh, stencils that I cut out. So the the white part that you see in the background is what the color would actually be. Um, so like this is the overspray that's on the stencil itself, this, this, this darker color here. Um, so when I actually set this on top of the canvas, uh, everything that you see is white would actually be this, this darker color when it's, when it's all set. Again, that's one of seven stencils um, to, to create this. So that in all is eight colors because I have a base color that I do before I do any stenciling whatsoever. All these stencils are done. Um, it, it, it's quite a process. I don't have the uh, clear sheet that I start with, but I uh, take a photograph, put it in a clear uh, sheet, kind of trace each color out. So I'd have seven for this one, seven uh, of those clear sheets that would get put on an overhead projector, put up onto a poster board, trace it out on the poster board, and then I cut out each individual one. Um, so that's when I cut them out, that's my third tracing of the same image for each, each one. So it's a very involved process. Um, everything's got to be lined up just so. If it's not lined up just so, it's not going to come out correctly. Um, I don't know if you can pan down, but you can kind of see the, the spray paint colors that I used for this particular painting. Um, not sure that I have a name for this one quite yet. Um, just the playful title that I have going on right now is Who's That? Who's There? So here we have another one of my uh, stencil uh, renderings. This here is a uh, self-portrait. I don't know if you can see the resemblance. Um, this is actually one of my cigar box guitars here. You can see the neck. I'm sitting on a bench on my back deck um, just wearing a plain white tee. Um, translates well. People ask me about the eyes. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. It's just that's, that's how it came out. All right, this piece is called The Moment in Darkness, and it is a watercolor slash pebble art. Um, the pebbles are from Lake Champlain, and it's kind of a way of combining both my watercolor and ink work with um, the found pebbles. That one is um, called Oblivious, and it's a one-line drawing um, done with um, just graphite, and it's basically an image of the today's youth um, awareness of what's around them and not awareness. Um, basically it shows them like lemurs kind of walking off the cliff after one another and as this one's taking a selfie um, while he falls um, because that's kind of his only focus um, on what he's paying attention to. And it was done for a show that was my senior project for CCV for my graphic design um, class and um, it was called Plugged and Unplugged, and it's based on technology in today's youth. So this is camouflage. Um, a lot of the photography that I do um, like to take for subject matters is just things in nature, things that you might walk past or not see unless you're really in tuned with what's around you, um, and kind of the little uh, hiding things that happen when you're walking in the woods or near a pond and things you might miss if you're not really aware of what's around you. So um, that tends to be a lot of my photography is subject matters with um, lots of really cool magical nature um, imagery. These are done with ink and watercolor and they're basically just trying to capture the movement of or the spirit of the image. Um, this one's a woman just kind of showing her her elegance and um, this one is trying to portray sadness and despair just with simple lines to try to capture emotions um, and that's what these pieces are kind of portraying. I 
weird and quirky, and that's what I like. <laughs> like, it's the lightheartedness to everything, and it's supposed to be like an old lady turkey yep. looking in the mirror with her fancy gaudy bracelet and fingernails having a glass of wine kind of in reflection. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you compose this? Color? It was hard. These are color spots because it's a black and white and you have to pick the color that you want with the select tool to make it stay the color it was. Like this is the real color it was, but I turned the rest of it black and white. And this is a mirror on a stand and I was using turkey feathers to kind of show that this was the turkey hand and relate the two together. And um, like I said, I wanted to kind of come in and have it like a woman, like looking back, either reflecting on her life or her beauty or how she's aged or just, you know, just kind of put it out there. <laughs> so this is called Selfie. It's a Norman Rockwell um, photo montage of the girl in the mirror. Um, it's basically showing technology and the vanity of children these days um, in self-image, taking pictures of themselves and trying to appear older and more promiscuous and more attractive and knowing that when they put it out there online into the internet, it's like, it's out there and it's not going to be retrieved, it can't be taken back. Um, and it's playing on the tradition of the Norman Rockwell paintings and um, the twist of technology today and how it's integrated into our kids' lives and and what it's doing to them on a social level and a communication level. Um, and I, I think it's a very sad thing, actually. Yes. This right. painting here is called Recharge. Um, basically, my it's a acrylic on canvas. Um, I have to say it's one of the first paintings I've ever done on canvas. <laughs> I don't tend to paint on canvas. Um, and it is basically showing a child going to bed at night and a cell phone plugged in, which is kind of their, like, their guts, like the inside of them, they've been on the like online all day, and it's they're trying to rest, and it's the same thing as charging your phone at night, and it's kind of a play on how merged the two are um, in um, in time, like how the cell phone and technology um, tends to be very integrated into a lot of children, all different ages, daily lives, and still has effects on them while they're resting at night because they're either overstimulated or um, their minds don't shut down as quickly as they should because, um, because of all of the uh, technology that they're experiencing throughout the day. It was done for the Wildlife Refuge to kind of be a tribute to the um, scarlet tanager bird, which I guess live on the tops of the trees and they sing this really cool song. So that's why I called it Treetop Melody. And it's done with pen and ink and on watercolor paper. And it's kind of a Mandela of the bird and all of its body parts into what it actually eats, which is the moth in the middle of the uh, image. So.